Green Doll for my review on Good Girls Go Bad. Yes, this is the beginning for my Halloween reviews. Now we go down to a simple go town. Danny Walker is a is a boy in a town, a small town that has been abandoned by Halloween due to the factors of some dumb prank. His father James, who has gotten divorced from his wife, had just moved into town from Chicago for his father can fulfill his dream of reopening the family chocolate factory. Danny and James are staying with, of course, James' father, known as Uncle Fred, who is voiced by Christopher Lloyd. An act by him. Uncle Fred considered crazy and a bit childish, but Danny loved him very much. Kind of reminded me of my grandfather. Danny dislikes his new life in Walker Falls. It seemed that no one liked him, especially the football coach, Mike Colden, the main villain. Or am I saying it wrong? His son, Ryan. Ugh, school biggest bully and brat. The only person who seems to be nice to Danny is Taylor Morgan, the school, nurse's the school nurse, who was once a childhood friend to, to James, childhood friend. Danny is surprised how few decorations are up for Halloween. Only a week away, the people walk about do not seem to make any effect to, to celebrate Halloween. Sheriff Ed Floyd even takes down decorations that Danny put up. And when walking home, Ryan and his pal Leo, who is quiet, pushed him into the cemetery and locked the gate and told him that Walker Falls does not celebrate Halloween because of the legend of the curse. Years ago, Curtis Dinkle, a very screwed up but arrogant, I mean, but weird child, an artist boy who was ostracized for his normal when companion, when competition, held an all eight graders to design a sculpture of the personal hero. Curtis kept his project covered during the day, but then he came at night to, well, fix, do his project with capturing butterflies to light the way. On one hungry night, Mike Kanko and his friends were walking in the school when they saw Curtis in the window work on a sculpture. When Curtis returned the next day, he noticed the kiln has been on all night. He opens the door and finds Curtis' charged skeleton, messed in acid, saying that if your town ever celebrates another Halloween, you would be back, you would be back to destroy them. Curtis was struck blind for three days after seeing Curtis spin a statue. Everyone in town believed in the threat. And since then, Halloween has been never been celebrated. Danny thinks it's a silly story and runs home. And Jane is rarely around. So Uncle Fred serves as the stand-in father for Daniel. Anyone would see that. I know how that is. My, un my father used to work a lot, so my Uncle John was there to help me. Was helped to raise me and my sister. It would have helped my mom and Aunt Rose, of course. Family was family, wonderful as usual. That night, James planned to announce the Halloween spectacular idea to raise fun. We do Walker or chocolates. Town mean Uncle Fred and Uncle Fred Daniel tried to tell him that the townspeople will be too afraid to support the spectacular because of the curse. But James would not listen. Me and Mayor who near Mayor Chunli. Announced that James was surprised to find people walker shuddered at the dimension of Halloween to bring the conversation back on track. The security passed some samples of chocolate and James almost win them. But when he revealed his protected account, the townspeople are terrified and run out of them. Also, it doesn't clear to me that the lady, the old lady in the front, looks resembles of Uncle Fred. It turned out when I read the novel, it turned out Uncle Fred went there and disguised himself as an old lady to see what his son can do to get some people to enjoy them. Sadly, it didn't happen though. That morning, the commodity outside of the house. Halloween decorations were all over town. A large pile of pumpkins. He's been discovered at the town square. My Uncle Fred lifted the pumpkin as Happy Halloween! But yet, let me just say from the moments. I love the, the pumpkin scene. The pumpkin seems like they're afraid to talk about pumpkin. Pumpkin is my favorite food. As you guys know, our family did farm it in our little back community. <laughs> but then suddenly, Avalanche! And it killed him. And everyone in town at Uncle Fred's funeral. And Danny's very sad. As a memento, he let his grandfather's favorite car shoot down track and rest his coffin. However, because of Uncle Fred's love of Halloween, the magic in the Sarah and the... You know. 
death place ghost one to die since rest allows him to return as a zombie. Unfortunately, the same magic awoke others from the slumber, including Curtis Dane Inkle. Zombies begin to capture all the townspeople and gather them for creepy old Victorian style house, chasing the phrase statue. Meanwhile, Danny and his crest Daniel to explain there's telling the situation. But Uncle Fred revealed his zombie self to his son. Well, before all that happened, we have Beer Fest. Yes, a stupid coach of an idiot decided to see if we can celebrate instead of Halloween, but a done by a Switzerland holiday for drinking beer. Well, a children's version anyway. But before that, he came back as a zombie, but given but given a hug to his to his to his nephew to his grandson. It was just adorable and truly adorable. Then he showed off of his zombie abilities and scared off. And then later on dressed up as a clown. <laughs> Which I hate clowns. That's why you don't see me dressed up as clowns, seriously. I hate clowns. Nothing but asses. Excuse me. Which <laughs> And then when they reveal an name for the clown was, of course, him in the flesh, or should I say dead flesh. So basically as I said before, the two the two kids got them out of there. And believe me. As we're mental and all that. And well meanwhile. Daniel try to explain James or Victorian style house. Oh, yes. Uh, Uncle Crash revealed his zombie self to his son, Neurotellus. Both, although frantically fainted, and the zombies broke into the house. And Uncle Fred explained that Curtis might be behind the zombie awakened and tells them to escape when he holds another zombie off. Unfortunately, he and his son, Neurotellus, are captured. One of the zombies stated Uncle Fred was the main part of the plan. And believe me, Christopher Lloyd, you are amazing in this movie. I love this movie as a child. To tell you the truth, the first time I watched this was when the 13 Days of Halloween on ABC Family, before they cut it down to like uh, 13 Days of Halloween, well, at least shorten it down. They used to do it on on the 13th. They would show every single movie. But then now they're doing it on the on the 19 now, and there's not even a lot of Halloween movies anymore. There, they still have it, but I wish they bring it back to 13 days of Halloween because 13 days, where the fun in that? So, um, I asked my dad to record this movie when I was very young, and I had it for a long time until I donated to charity. But luckily, um, I was able to download, it, so I'll be able to watch it for Halloween. Halloween's my favorite holiday. <laughs> Plus, this is what I'll be wearing for Halloween, a ladybug princess. <laughs> what do you think? Isn't it cute? <laughs> okay, back to the work. Alright. As Dana and ja as Dana and David went out, they saw their... He saw his... Ah, oh, my grandma's a zombie! My grandma's a zombie! Gathering all the intel on all the kids and everyone being together. And as they got to the house that was turned to a haunted house, for Halloween night for the kids, because the kids gather them up candy, collect their costumes and decorations, start to make their own house. Unfortunately, they had to give it to the bully, so the bully wouldn't rat them out. I hate bullies. In any case, when everyone's gathered, then, as they got scared by the zombies coming in, a kid in a monkey mask came to them also. And then, bam, surprised to be cut his ankle. And as they fall through the, through the, through the roof, through the floor, though, yeah, how did they survive? Didn't they get hurt? Nope, they didn't. And then, as he was about to reveal the statue, he was literally attacked by Curtis. Yeah, that stupid dumb coach. Because Curtis is a zombie, he managed to put himself together. Nope. And scared the witch out of Kinko. As Curtis pulled up the swallow of the statue, everyone was covering their eyes with here. Surprisingly, nothing happened. Everyone covered their eyes and Curtis' statue revealed that Uncle Fred, Curtis, then showed Uncle Fred a picture of them two together. Uncle Fred shaking Curtis's hand and implied that Curtis looked up to him. And Uncle Fred still guilty but Curtis's death but wondered why his hero to Curtis if he was killing the kill. And Curtis then turned to Connor and pointed at him like a mummy in a sarcophagus. Named him as the killer. Kinko confessed that night that, K that Curtis died that he was working on a statue of his Uncle Fred and as a prank to scare him. Kinkus and Freda and his group Push Curtis into the kiln, locking him and torturing him. Suddenly, the janitor appeared, and Kanko, and Kanko group ran off. And clear in the class, the janitor actually turned on the kiln, and well, dead and dead. Next day, Kenneth went inside the kiln and saw Curtis's corpse as well—a complete statue of Uncle Fred. To hide his crimes, he made up the curse and pretended his eyes were burned, and he saw the statue made it seem like it was evil. 
revealed that the statue of Uncle Fred would have been voted to be put in town square instead of King Kinkin's statue of his father. It's revealed that Uncle Fred donated much time and money to the town and children, promoting creativity and imagination. So he was loved by many children, explained that's why he was called Uncle Fred, which is true. My mother's action was seen as children. Some can't go, wouldn't stand for some pumping things. They were girly, wanted things manly. However, Kinko's actions earned him the wrath of his father. Pops Kinko, who is among the group of zombies, is upset at what he has done, and then grabbed his ear and dragged him off, giving him a whooping, and he never forgets, like, oh! I bet he's going to get his butt whooped. In the end, the zombies in town folk applaud Curtis's statue with that. Curtis, accompanied that he done a big bid farewell to the town, disappeared to the night. Return in the crypt, return in the rest. Meanwhile, the other zombies bid farewell. Uncle Fred recalled him with his son, James, saying that last time he would ever see him on earth, but he'd always be watching him on the other side. Then his wife comes in, and James sees his mother. Yes, she did not look dead to you. She looked like a see she was alive. I believe that she probably died last year, and then... No. My thoughts is, what if his wife died a couple of weeks ago? And that's why we haven't seen her, uh, you know, look like a zombie. I mean, looking like a, you know, skin removed and all that. But, yeah. She was able, he was able to see his mother for the last time, and... David was able to see his grandmother. I mean, Daniel. I mean, Danny. Sorry. You know, Daniel's names always seem to confuse me. And then, as they disappeared, dancing into the night, sharing the final dance of the fireflies, as the entire solely disappears, dancing into the night, Danny and Daniel shared a kiss while Jim and Taylor hold hands and they watch dancing on the fade night. Oh, guys. Don't say this. Don't think it. If Daniel, if their parents did get married, then Danny and Daniel would be, um, well, uh, siblings. Ugh, gross thought. Gross hot. Gross, gross, gross. But the end. But on the next day, during their Halloween fun, as they can, as they want everyone in town. Well, no, no, wait. Sorry. I mean, you know, what I mean, this. I know I'm reading the script. In the end, the German investors spoke to James early and loved the concept of Halloween. Decided to support him in the reopening of the family chocolate factory. Within two weeks, on Halloween Day, the children are seen dressed up in costumes, going to Katrina's as girl from the Halloween group goes to Uncle Fred's statue, and Squidward and passes by and says, Happy Halloween! Then, as the girl leaves, then Uncle Fred's voice is heard last week, Happy Halloween. And there you have it. My thoughts, I say, I love this movie. Even though I hated Goosebumps, but... This is the only Goosebump thing I loved. It was created in 2001. Fox Family Television based on the book R.L. Stein, which I have the book. I got it last year for Halloween, which book's pretty much good. And it started, but, and of course, during the Halloween season, it did start with Christopher Lloyd, directed by Patrick Reed Johnson, who was the co wrote it. Christopher Lloyd, you are an amazing man. But that's all I have to say, folks. In any case, be careful for my next review. It might scare you the heebie-jeebies. <laughs> okay, my brony watchers. Remember to subscribe to my channel. And remember, there's always more with me than meets the eye. Or, should I say, more than meets a white rose. Night, folks. <laughs>